Hey guys, and welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West. The last episode, it, it was amazing. Uh, we got to Ted's bunker, we did get the Omega clearance, but just the way that quest was done and how it unfolded was... It was, it was so good. I'm glad they did it the way they did, so if you haven't seen it, I do, I do recommend. Um, but yeah, now we have to go to a cauldron to prepare for the mission. So let's, let's just get started. I also think Alba's here, right? Okay. All kinds of messages back in the day. Let's uh, let's talk All to everyone before we too. head into Gaia. Yeah, I don't know if I'd like that. I wouldn't want my aunt Alga knowing she could just talk to me every second of the day. <laughs> my ears. <laughs> there she is. Heard you had an interesting time at Thebes. Oh yes. <laughs> Maniacs, lava. What's not to like? I remember that next time I go traveling. At least I got what we needed to trap Hephaestus. Good thing I got my gear ready then. I was hoping you could help me with something. It's about the Tanakh rebels, and it also has to do with the Osram. Really? That doesn't sound good. Let me know what I can do to help. Have you spoken with Alva yet? Yeah, when she's not reading the archives like a giddy kid drinking her first ale. Aww. She took to that new focus quick, that's for sure. I gotta say, I'm a little jealous. But I can see why you two hit it off. You look tired. Ha! You're never one to hold back, are you? I've just been making sure that I got everything down for this mission of yours. I wouldn't want to be the usual screw-up out there. You'll do fine, Aaron. Oh, Aaron, you're not a screw-up. Can we give him a hug? Where's the hug option? I discovered an Osiram militant group. They call themselves the Sons of Prometheus. It looks like they're the ones overriding machines for the Tanakh rebels. I thought that was something only you could do. They're familiar with ancient tech, and they're as anti-Karja as it gets. So, where's silence? Last by the year way? we stopped Durval and his cronies from blowing up Meridian in retribution for the Red Raids, and now you're telling me we have another group of Asaram trying to wipe out the Karja with, with an army of machines and bloodthirsty Tanakh? Pretty much. Oh, well, that's just great. Is there any way you can help me find out who they are? Anything to track them down and stop them? Yeah, I can send out some messages from Chainscrape. Get in touch with my contacts in the claim, see what I can find out. I'd appreciate that. Nice. Yeah, Silence has been a little bit on the quiet side recently. I should get going. I'm concerned. As soon as you want us heading out to those cauldrons. I'll give you the heads up. Hey, Val. From the look on your face, I'd say the mission was a success. I got Omega Clarence. Is everyone ready to head out to Cauldron Gemini? As soon as you give the word. Did Alva make it here all right? Our new Quen friend. The moment she laid eyes on the archives, she jumped on them like a long leg. Sounds about right. Bless her. Once Gaia is back up and running, I expect you to put all your training to good use. The seeds have been planted. All they need is a chance to bloom. What? <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Zo liked it. I'm glad you and Zo found each other. Don't forget, you're to blame for that. You're welcome. <laughs> now that I have Omega clearance, we can grab Hephaestus and finally have the advantage over the Zeniths. Can't wait to see their faces as they stare down a bunch of charging thunder jaws. Better them than us, for once. I should go get this to Gaia. Of course. Let us know when we're needed. I can see Alva in the background. There she is. Welcome back. Good to be back. Have you met our new Quen guest yet? I could barely keep up as she gave herself a tour of the base. Varro gave her a new focus. Though when he told her she was free to access all the data we had here, she turned so pale I, I thought she'd faint on the spot. <laughs> We showed her to the archive room so she could see for herself. She hasn't left the place since. Sounds like Alva. How are things with everyone? 
Slightly quieter. Aaron's been busy scouring data on his newest obsession. Apparently the old ones wrestled machines as some kind of performance. Called it metal versus meat. A must-see battle between steel and flesh, as Aaron likes to put it. You'd think we have enough of that going around as it is. Aaron would be all Not anything that. interesting lately? I found out the old ones used leaf infusions like the Utaru do. Tea, they call it. Apparently it helped soothe them. That and some sort of scented wax they used to cleanse their aura. Uh, plus something called bubble baths. <laughs> Me, I think I'll stick to singing to calm the nerves. I assume you've been looking into Demeter now that Gaia's merged with it? Yes. It's been humbling to know that the seeds I carry in this pouch came in turn from the seeds saved for Demeter in the Old World. It gives me hope that the cycle of life will prevail now, just as it did before. I need to get going. Right. You've retrieved the Omega Clearance. That means we'll be going after Hephaestus soon. I'll make sure my gear is ready. These last few missions have been a lot. <laughs> so cool though. Hey Alva. Oh look at her. Aloy! Right to work I see. There's just so much. Oh. I mean, we knew of artificial beings that served the ancestors, but Gaia? Oh, she's amazing! <sighs> And you, a true reincarnation of an ancestor. Genetically speaking, of course, not like the um, late CEO. And there's more ancestors out there, returned from beyond the stars. Of course, they're trying to kill us, which is not great. And Eric Visser is with them, which is disturbing. And then there's Hephaestus, and... Okay, okay, how about <laughs> we take it one step at a time? You're right. Oh. I also owe you an explanation for everything that happened at Landfall. She's so sweet. I imagine you don't know anyone here that well yet, but they're a good group. It's funny because one of your friends is, well, another you not that you are the same person at all i mean you are as in you're both genetically elizabeth sobeck but even so you're different yeah we are i hope everyone's been treating you okay oh yeah of course they've all been extremely welcoming and they share the knowledge they learn on their focuses with each other freely it's refreshing. Aww. Back home, diviners can only share data with the permission from the overseers. Sounds restrictive and stifling. Yeah, you are not wrong. I see you've been using your new focus. It's been fascinating. So much better than the version the Quen have. What would have taken me years to sort through, like the database you helped me recover? With this, I've been able to establish search parameters to speed up the process. This could revolutionize how diviners analyze the legacy. That is, whatever part of it the overseers would actually let us study. You want data, you'll find lots of it here. A diviner has never had this sort of unsupervised access to archives such as this. And... Knowing you, I suspect there is much that would normally be forbidden held within them. But I was sent here to help you. I would be remiss to ignore any truth laid before me. Maybe it'll help the Quen find their way back to the path of truth. You mentioned Eric Visser? How do you know about him? The Zenith who tried to kill you? He is known to the Quen as the Protector. Oh. Combing through data related to his work led us to breakthroughs related to weapons and military tactics. Knowledge our rulers used to conquer and expand. To become the empire we are today. That's why he's one of our most revered ancestors. But, based on your encounter with him, 
It appears he's even more ruthless than we ever imagined. Yet another distorted interpretation in the legacy. Well, at least you're piecing together the truth. If only the overseers back home would do the same. Beta mentioned other Zenas. Tilda, Verbena, and Gerard. I'm afraid I don't know anything about them. Whatever legacy they left behind, the Diviners haven't recovered. Interesting. Back at the greenhouse, you spoke of knowledge forbidden to your people. Diviners are meant to seek out the truth in the legacy. And many Imperials sponsor them in the hopes they'll find something the Empire can put to use, thus gaining favor with the Emperor. But the Board of Overseers claims certain truths are detrimental to the stability of the Empire. Like discovering one of our revered ancestors ended the world. That is why Diviners are only allowed to access segments of the Legacy. Only Overseers can view it all. It ensures that any heretical data can be contained and retrieved before it can spread. What happens to Diviners who break the rules? I never had the courage to ask. Can't imagine it was pleasant. You said you owed me an explanation for what happened in Thebes. I'm listening. Right. I'll start at the beginning, with the CEO. He was an Imperial, the Emperor's nephew, in fact. As such, he sponsored many Diviners to search the Legacy for anything that might help the tribe, and himself. He took a special interest in anything related to Ted Farrow, whom we consider the greatest of the ancestors. Ted Farrow, revered ancestor. That's tough to take. I know better now, of course. Anyway, the Diviners discovered that Farrow spent a great deal of time in San Francisco. In fact, many of the most important ancestors did. So the Emperor's nephew convinced him that an expedition across the ocean might solve our most pressing problems. If only we could find the right data in this fabled city. Perhaps we could roll back the floods and storms that threatened our people. The Emperor declared that all the tribe's resources be poured into this endeavor. Dozens of ships were built, scouting missions were dispatched, and the Emperor's nephew was named Sio, one who wields the legacy for the good of the Empire. The living embodiment of Ted Farrow, the Renewer. It may seem strange now, but for a time, he carried all of our hopes. We really believed he would save us. We had no idea just how perilous the journey would be. You said the expedition across the sea was more dangerous than you thought it would be. What happened? We lost most of our ships to hurricanes, and scores of soldiers perished to hunger and disease. And that was before we even hit the coast. Once we landed, machines ripped our patrols apart, and we struggled to replenish our rations. There were bright spots, to be sure. We found Thebes and the greenhouse, but nothing improved the CEO's mood as his dreams of saving the tribe were slowly dashed. He became more and more obsessed with Thebes and what lay behind its door, and more and more convinced that the title of CEO was no mere honorific. You heard him, spouting nonsense about Pharaoh's essence and some kind of becoming. We knew these weren't the words of a sane man, but he was quick to put any who spoke out in front of a firing squad. What a great guy. The Quen are wrong about many things when it comes to the legacy. I can see that now. But what the CO became was a complete perversion of what principal diviners stand for. The pursuit of truth. Uh, I'm sorry you had to endure his madness. I'm just glad it's over. For everyone. So, Bohai, your overseer, will he run things better than Sio? He won't execute people on a whim, if that's what you mean. But he's hardly a paragon that's of integrity. Good. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times he took credit for data in the legacy that I uncovered. The best thing I can oh. say about him is that he can be trusted to always do what's best for him. Yep, sounds about right. No. Oh. The Ancestors, is that what your people call the Old Ones? 
Yes and no. The ancestors are the greatest of the old ones. Those whose legacy taught us agriculture, medicine, warfare, leadership, and patronage of the science and arts. The CEO called Elizabeth Sobek an assistant. What's that about? Such right. an insult. Well, any old one who has made minor contributions or worked extensively under one of the ancestors is called an assistant. That's how we thought of Sobek, until we met you. Our limited access to data past the late 2040s has obviously uh, misinformed our view of the past. You mentioned the reason you came here was to help your family. Your sister... Her name is Alika. Our parents are commoners. Peasants, really. When I passed the divination exams, they were so proud. It brought honor to our family and increased rations. Only, Alika begged me not to leave for the research academy. Why? What happens there? Alika knew that once you enter, you're not allowed to leave or see anyone. Not even your family. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you can get special permission and an escort by an overseer. That sounds harsh. Like the focuses we keep, diviners are few in number, and the Empire is... well... fearful that outsiders will try to steal our knowledge. Last time I was allowed to see my family was just before our voyage here. Because of my position, I was able to get them refuge from the floods within the capital. But if our crops don't recover soon, they'll starve to death along with everyone else. I promise I'll do my best to make sure it doesn't come to that. Oh. I need to get going, but if you need anything... All I need is to help you succeed in your mission. The plan Gaia told me about, to capture Hephaestus, it will help set things right? I hope so. Then I will do whatever I can. I promise. She is so sweet, I can't. <laughs> I can't. She's just so lovely. Alright, let's um let's head to the, the cauldron. Let's go. Welcome back. Hey Gaia. Aloy. I know your experience in Thebes was unsettling, but we have a new problem. Did something go wrong with Beta and the rig? Will we be able to transport you to Gemini? The rig is complete. The problem is Hephaestus itself. It has accelerated its proliferation throughout the Cauldron Network, increasing its power. But with your subfunctions restored, we can still succeed, right? Correct. But the net effect is that absorbing Hephaestus will take longer than previously calculated. How long? Even with Omega clearance, my current estimate is that the merge will take 35 hours. And each hour increases the risk of detection by the Zeniths. Two cores. Two overrides. What if the merge were carried out by two clones of Elizabeth Sobek, both armed with Omega Clearance? How long then? Half the time? Hephaestus would be unprepared for the simultaneous labor of two operators, in addition to obvious synergetic efficiencies. Calculating. It would reduce the merge time to approximately 4.5 hours. Damn. Okay. Varl, it looks like we're gonna need Beta at Gemini. Do you think you can convince her? Uh, I don't know, but I'll try. What about our diversion? Are the pulse generators ready? Only a final test remains. I am confident that if fired in proximity to other cauldrons, the pulses will mask our activities at Gemini from the Zeniths. Good. As long as Aaron can operate one without shooting himself in the face. Aloy. Hey, you better get down here. Beta's in bad shape. Okay. What? Why? Nothing's ever easy, is it? <laughs> Nothing's ever easy. Aloy. 
I tried, but it's impossible. I don't think anything will convince her to go. We don't have a choice. Good luck. Beta, you have to come with us. It's the only way. It's one mission. The most important one. We need you. Tell me why you won't go. What if they... What if they take me back? Alone. In a cell again. Their slave. Forever. Oh. Find your courage. Look at the odds. Oh, I don't know. We have a solid plan. You helped come up with it. Without you there, the probability that the Zeniths discover us is high. But with you, that risk is much less. We'll get Hephaestus, get out, and come back here. It'll be okay. No! You can't guarantee that! I told you from the beginning we'll never beat them! It's hopeless! Beta. Leave me alone! You don't understand! You're right. I don't understand. We have the same genes, the same mind, the same heart. So why can't you find the strength to do what has to be done? Like Elizabeth would. Don't you think I've thought about that? I don't know what piece of Elizabeth I'm missing. I don't know what you have that I don't. I look through all the data from your focus. You were raised as an outcast, shunned and isolated just like me, so what's the difference? What's my defect? He raised you, trained you, but he was never warm or loving. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. He wanted me to embrace the tribe. But then he gave his life for mine. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. What did he feel like? It was like having a strength that was always there. It's still there. Even now I hear him in my head when things get bad. But it looks impossible. Look deeper. And then fight like you can win. You don't have to go on a mission. We'll find another way. I'll go. Like you said, odds are in our favor if I do. We have to succeed. But you have to promise me one thing. Yes, of course. If it goes bad, if the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? Okay. Promise? I 
promise. I could use as much time as you can give me to study up on the merch, to make it as efficient as possible. I'll be ready when you are. I swear. Ready for that? <laughs> Game has a habit of doing that. <laughs> right strategy. Forget it. The man is unbeatable at machine strike. His people invented the game. What did you expect? Kotalo can't win every time. Try to be optimistic. Try to be realistic. We're terrible. <laughs> oh. Hey, I thought I'd check in before leaving for Gemini. Are you sure we shouldn't be uh, checking up on you? Whatever went on between you and Beta sounded intense. Not that I'm judging. <laughs> Forge knows all the screws flew loose every time Mercer and I fought. I think we'll be fine from now on. I'm glad to hear it. Anybody take you up on that ale you brought yet? Zo can't stand the smell of it. I tried Alva, but I don't think she knows what taking a break means. And I'm not putting Varl anywhere near that stuff after that victory party in Meridian. <laughs> what about Catalo? Ah, now there's a man that can hold his liquor. Pretty sure we downed half a keg. We had a good chat, I think. Hey. After we get Hephaestus, we'll be taking the fight to the Zeniths. So, no more reading. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Not really. Besides, uh, going through all that data helped me realize something. You know, the soldiers, the, the ones that fought the Pharaoh machines so Gaia could be built? Uh, they were fighting a battle that couldn't be won. Not with all the weapons in the world. I think most of them realized that, whether anyone said it or not. They still did it, though. They bought time for all the eggheads working to save the future. Our future. As long as I can do that for you, I'll consider myself a success. Thank you, Arendt. I'm glad you're with me. Okay, enough. I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> I should go. That yeah, same here. I got a date with a cauldron to prepare for. Aloy. Everything okay with you and Beta? It sounded like you guys had a, uh, lively conversation. We just had a lot to talk about. Does this mean she's coming with us to Gemini? It does. I hope you're ready to rein in the most stubborn AI of all time. That's what all this was for, wasn't it? Hephaestus won't go down quietly. Hephaestus is just a program that's lost its way. We are fighting for our survival. I can always call upon the goddess if you're nervous. Funny. How does everyone seem to you? Anxious, but ready. I heard Catalo ask for Alva's help with his pulse generator. And I know he's been helping her with a few fighting techniques, just in case. I hope they are needed. Like I said, I love how everyone's coming case. together. Any last findings you want to share before leaving? Not really. Though I've reached a decision. Oh? When we put Gaia together, I want to return to the Nora, spread what I've learned. You think they'll listen to you? In time, I believe so. If anyone can make it happen, it's you, Val. What will you and Zo do if you go back to the Embrace? I hope she'll come with me, at least for a while. And I'll go with her to Plainsong, too. She'll probably want to talk to her people about all this as well. We'll figure it out. I know you will. 
I hope firing off those pulse generators will be enough to distract the Zeniths. It'll work. It has to. Always optimistic, huh? Nah, just stubborn. It's a good quality to have when dealing with you. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. You were right, you know, about keeping Rost's memories buried. I guess part of me thought he was holding me back because he wanted me to be a Nora. But the truth is, he gave me a lot. And I took him for granted. He was a good man. He raised you well. I'm glad you're coming with me, Varl. Sure there's no urge to run off alone in there somewhere? No more running. Yay. Hey. We'll be going after Hephaestus soon. You good with the plan? I've already got the location of my assigned cauldron. Good. I heard you and Veda had a... talk. News travels fast. It wasn't exactly a quiet conversation. There were just things that needed to be said. A healthy crop to those who clear the weeds between them, as the Utaru say. You look like you have something on your mind. We're going to war soon. And war is something I promised myself I'd left behind in the Red Raids. But the more of your data I go through, Every voice I hear, every word I read from our ancient past, it makes me realize just how much life was given so that ours could flourish. Fighting for that gift, it's our responsibility. If we fail, it was all for naught. Helps to know you're not alone. For a moment there, you sounded like Varl. I don't know what you're talking about. I should go. As soon as you intend to leave for Gemini, you'll hear about it. <sighs> right. I think it's time. Let's head to, uh, to Gemini. Hello again, Aloy. Hey. Hello, Aloy. Hey, Gaia. So, uh, me and Beta, I guess you heard what happened. Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships. Despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel, I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? Or we can continue our conversation, if you like. So, once Hephaestus has been covered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at Cauldrons around the world. Yes. And to program their... Oh, I think we've already done this human. one. So, I could, given the... I must, no matter... Indeed. I think. So, about Beta. I never really saw the difference between us until now. She's been through so much. Completely alone. You have both endured many hardships. Different in almost every respect, yet equally remarkable. I like to think of you as two miracles, born of Elizabeth Sobek. Three, then. Let's not forget about you, Gaia. <laughs> All this data I've picked up in ancient bunkers and ruins, I guess I never really thought that other people would be looking at it. Based on my observations, your companions engage quite frequently with this material. Erend has asked on numerous occasions about birthday parties. He appears perplexed by the tradition of serving a sweet confection, as it conflicts with the Osaram tradition of serving sparkling stout ale. He also suggested we host a party for you, Aww. as a surprise. 
Uh, yeah, no thanks. That is what I predicted. <laughs> Aww. Is Catalo getting along with everyone? Yes, though he prefers to spend most of the time alone. He appears to be collating data on war machine progression and significant battles during the Pharaoh Plague. To aid in the creation of a war map of Operation Enduring Victory. I believe he aims to study the tactics of old world warfare. I'd be interested in seeing that. It appears to be a private pastime for him. He has repeatedly declined my offers to assist his research. How's all of us settling in? As soon as she arrived, Alva was eager to study the data in the archive. A particular file soon caught her attention. Information about a machine assistant devoted to keeping living spaces neat and orderly. I informed her that once I am empowered with the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to design such a machine. I'm sure she'll like that. When I set out to find a way to bring you back, I never thought we'd be here, like this. Among friends. They have all come a long way with their improvised educations. Varl has suggested that one day we might extend this model to more tribal inhabitants, once the biosphere has been stabilized. Yeah, that's not such a bad idea. As long as you're the one running the lessons. So now that you have Aether, Demeter, and Poseidon, how's the biosphere looking? In the local region, conditions have improved. Superstorms have subsided. Water sources have been purified, and soil conditions remediated. These improvements will stave off environmental collapse for a few additional months. Well, with luck, soon you'll have Hephaestus. Then you'll be able to fix the biosphere for good, right? Correct. I will be able to design and produce robotic agents to permanently reverse the environmental damage that has accumulated. There's something I've been wondering. How could Ted Farrow create a clearance level higher than Alpha? Elizabeth made sure he wouldn't interfere with the project. It is plausible he tasked his own engineers with creating a backdoor to the Zero Dawn system. Without Elizabeth's knowledge. My predecessor did until he... So the facility where I recovered Demeter used to be a feral agricultural research facility. It's where they created the biomass conversion system, but also adamantine wreath. Did Elizabeth know they were working on that? It is likely she was briefed on other efforts to combat the machine swarm. Though her focus was devoted only to Zero Dawn. That makes sense. But they actually got the wreaths to work. If they've been able to deploy it against the Pharaoh Plague in time... Using the data you recovered on the project, I ran several simulations and have concluded that it would never have worked. In all scenarios, the Pharaoh War Machines would eventually hack That's and crazy. deactivate the wreaths before they could contain the swarm. So Zero Dawn really was the only solution. There was a lot of data in the greenhouse facility about agriculture. Do you think it'll help the Quen fix their homeland? I will run a query. Complete. The data contains information about novel crop production methods, which may be beneficial to the tribe in the long term. But new crops aren't going to save the world. So I guess it's on us. It is. So I, uh, found Thebes. What do you think Ted would have done if his life extension treatments had worked? It seems he convinced himself it was his duty to guide future humans. Given the tribal nature of new humans, and his ability to use Omega Clearance on the terraforming system, 
I imagine he would have convinced one or more tribes to worship him as their patriarchal deity. Okay. Yep, glad that didn't happen. Yeah, we don't need that at all. <laughs> Aside from Gaia Prime and Thebes, there was one other underground facility that was sealed before the Pharaoh Plague reached it. Elysium. The place where Zero Dawn staff and their families went to live out their lives. Do you know what happened to it? Elysium was designed to provide life support for 100 years. My data indicates the facility went offline well before then. Did the Pharaoh Plague find them? Unknown. My connection to the facility was abruptly severed. So what will happen to this place? I'd like to find it. Gemini. All systems within this facility will continue to operate. As Minerva will no longer be masking this location, the facility will be exposed to detection. Though without my presence, it is unlikely to attract attention. Let's hope so. Yeah, I like this place. <laughs> I like this place. Right, let's um... Let's go. Okay, people. It's time to head out. I'll get everyone together. Look at everyone. Connections in place. Booting up. Beta, Aloy. I am fully installed on this core and ready to connect to the Cauldron Network. It's good to hear your voice. Aaron, everyone. Fire your pulses and sound off. I'm at my Cauldron. This thingy, it's blinking. Did I do it right? In position at my cauldron. My pulse generator is blinking also. That means they're working. I'm in position and mine is too. Mine as well. Okay, radio silence until I give the all clear. Signing off. Gaia, let's cage the beast. <laughs> Connecting to the cauldron network now. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Clearance confirmed. Initiating containment sequence. to compensate. It's cracked. Look! Oh, no. Autonomous defenses. Collective neutralize. That means machines.
machines are on their way. Get ready. Here they come. For I'll stay here. Oh Protect Beta. Got it. Be careful. Let's go, let's go. You two okay? Still breathing. Hey, Loy. Hephaestus can't escape, but it must have fled. Deeper into the facility. I'll drive it back here. I'll get the cracked core fixed in the meantime. Keep her safe, Varl. All my life. <sighs> right, let's go and find this stubborn AI. <laughs> uh. it out of wherever it's hiding. Make it retreat to the core. Oh, hi. Oh! You don't, Hephaestus. Oh. I'll find another way over. Hey, Loy. I'm patched into your focus feet. You should know there is a huge power draw coming from the next chamber. Okay, so heads up. I'm almost there. <gasps> it's some kind of production chamber. Festus is up to something, all right? What, what kind of machine is it trying to build? I don't know, but I'm going to shut it down. Am I? <laughs> where it's getting materials from. I bet that's where Festus is hiding too. I don't like the sound of where this is heading. <laughs> for another chamber. I better follow them. There's an opening at the top of the shield. Let's go a little this way. Aloy, I've managed to rewire most of the components in the core, but processors cracked. Without a way to fabricate another, th there's no way I can fix it. Okay, um, let me think. What if... Thank 
Get comfortable. machine carcasses? Right. Or, or some luminous braiding. And you could reinforce it with a conversion cylinder. For increased connectivity! I, I think... I think we can do this, Aloy. No. Okay. Oh. It's intense. Access restored. 
Now you can override it. Work? You did the heavy lifting. Such a great team. I hope it's going okay for everyone else. Running out of places to hide. Uh, Aloy? I just registered a huge energy surge back in the production chamber. Something what? big is happening. Here too. Everything's glowing. The machine at first just was closing. It oh, must have finished no. it. It's powerful. Enough. It's powerful. I'm almost yes. done with the core repair. Should, should we come to you? Maybe I could distract the machine if... No, wait. Just stay where you are, okay? Handling the machine's my job. Oh. Okay. Be safe. I'm scared. I'm scared. Slaughter's fine. Uh, I think it's charging up. We can take out its tail. Stop some of its attacks. Okay. Finish charging. Oh wow. It's covered in plasma. Oh my lord. I mean, he looks really cool. I'm not going to stay too long to look at him, but I need his tail. Sending Hephaestus back to you. He was crazy. No more hiding, Hephaestus. Let's go, go, go. Got it. Hephaestus is back in the core. Come on, guys. Make sure it stays there. I'm heading back. Because of you, Beta. I'm glad you came along. And you, Varl. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Right back at you, Aloy. No. Alright, let's get this over with. Let's get it done. The bypass is done. The core is stable. Festus is 100% contained. Now we better get started with the merge. 
it's all set up. Gaia, establish the link, please. Done. We need to excise Hephaestus' malicious code. Carefully. Cost us quite a lot of time. No, 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 no. Eric, get beta. And squash that bug while you're there. Get Gaia and Hephaestus ready for transport. Telda! I failed. Hush. All is not lost. Telda! What the hell are you doing? Stop her! Zeniths. You must be Tilda. I wasn't sure if... Beta would have told you about me. Where is she? Alive. And while she isn't where she wants to be, not in urgent danger. We must discuss how to get her back, of course, after you've... shaken off the cobwebs. 
When you're ready, take the stairs down the hall and, and come see me. In the meantime, I'll make breakfast. Breakfast? Okay. from my collection rescued and stored here just before I went off world take a look if you like I'm curious to hear your impressions my friend is dead Beta and Gaia are gone and you want me to look at old paintings don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art or the insight we might gain Do you want the it? Gust by Willem van der Velde, the most famous of his many maritime paintings. A ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres. Clinging to the light, even as darkness closes in all around it. Stunning, isn't it? Paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's Lidded Ewer. Done so soon? I've got more important things to worry about. We both do. There is much we are trying to save. Not the least of which is in that vault. There's nothing wrong with savoring such treasures for me. The vault was gone. <laughs> there you are. Feeling better? How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses, accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it... it rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? Why is the tablecloth so white? <laughs> this was your house. The one you recreated for Beta. In the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done? You think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. You shot off into space with them. And lived with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. I hold focus. You repaired it? But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to. In order to understand. To be enlightened. You truly are Elizabeth's blood. 
with her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. We must recover Beta and Gaia at all costs. By now, you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Remaking this world to specifications that would only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. He calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship, a complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted, heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them, create the world she imagined. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. I do wish you would stop calling them my friends. And they're not invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. Silence. Oh, he's been a busy bee, building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Oh. Regala and her rebels. Even now, she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh, the capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. Hundreds of warriors and machines to throw at the base. She's been duped. They'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow silence to kill him. Along with all the others. Using the new weapon he's developed. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shield. Truly an exceptional man, he's planned for everything, except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way, one that only I know about, while Silence and my friends are busy battling each other. We'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I want to help you. I mean it. I really hope we can trust her. I hope this isn't some, like, ploy to then turn against me later on. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape... Bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. You'd be dead. So I should be grateful? If you like. So you know all about me? What about you? What would you like to know? Everything. Well? Start with your life on Earth. When I was eight, terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. 
My guardian sent me to boarding school. Among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh. So we're a lot alike, huh? Aren't we? You were an outcast. But you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries. Profitable expertise in those days. But as it turned out, the software I developed was even more useful for counterintelligence. From there, it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own. You were a spy? More like a service one could turn to for information. I had to remain anonymous, of course, to protect my privacy. But despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. What happened when Far Zenith approached you? They painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death, where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in, Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Far Zenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know. Imagine if Liz did go. How things different things would be. So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were, certainly. It, it wasn't until we were off planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. It wasn't life. It was stultifying, a pampered dream state. As the decades passed, I withdrew more and more, alone yet again, but this time with eons to consider my mistakes. Now, finally, having met you, I feel like I have a second chance. To do what? Help you. To fulfill Liz's dream, which isn't so different from Far Zenith's original vision. A better future for humanity. Beta told me your colony was destroyed. That you came back to Earth because you had nowhere else to go. It's true. After we reached our destination, a planet in the Sirius star system, we spent decades building a new home. The physical constraints of Earth, the boundaries of mortality, gone. To think of what we could have done with it. It might have been a utopia. Instead, we stagnated, absorbed in effortless comforts and virtual realities. It took a cataclysm to finally yank us out of our stupor. What happened? A massive geological event. We knew of instabilities in the planet core, but we underestimated them. By the time the collapse was upon us, it was too late to stop it. Only a few of us made it to the ship in time. We set course for Earth, the only safe harbor left to us. Which you decided to make unsafe for anyone else. Not me. Gerard. He believes it's better to wipe the canvas clean than work around the smudges. No more primitive tribes, no more combat machines, only a blank slate to do with as he pleases. But we will stop him. All we have to do is get into that base.
What exactly is your plan to sneak into the Zenith base? We will make use of a lesson I learned from an early age. Always know your accents. In this case, a place where Gerard's new construction meets the ancient foundation. A passage that only I can access. When Silence flings his army at the base, we will enter through this back door, bypassing most of the fighting. The distraction will provide us with a window in which to rescue Beta and Gaia. Once we're inside the base, where will we find Beta and Gaia? Here, in the command center. By then, Gaia will have been reunited with all of its subordinate functions, including Justice. What about the Alpha build of Apollo on your ship? A simple matter of recovery as the others have been dealt with. With that in hand, we'll have everything we need to make this world as it should be. You said Beta is not in urgent danger, so what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be, but her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea, not mine. They Could always viewed in. me with suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the Data Channel. A virtual place where we could speak in peace. So this channel you shared with Beta... ...none of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes. Though it pained me. I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. Well, she felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place. Not just for me, but for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. Oh, this sounds about silence. How do you know about Silence's plan? He isn't the only one adept at spyware. You hacked his focus? <laughs> no, he's too careful for that. But his subordinates? <laughs> Not so much. He gave additional focuses to the tribals he branded the Sons of Prometheus. The ones working with Regala. By tapping their focuses, I learned about most of his dealings. The distribution of override technology, the arming of Tanakh okay, rebels, and silence. a secret pact with Regala to attack Gerard's base. But how did he come up with a weapon that can take down your shields? That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out, but... However he did it, I'm quite certain it will work. With it and the Tanakh army, victory seems to be within his grasp. Such a shame he'll be disappointed. Regala's only interested in killing Hakaro and waging war on the Karja. What does she have to gain by attacking Zenith? It's the price she must pay for her war. 
Without the ability to override machines, her little rebellion would have languished in the desert. So she trades with the sons of Prometheus. Machines to help her overthrow Hikaru. In exchange for an assault on the base. Pride has deluded her into thinking she can actually survive such a battle. And all without ever knowing who the sons of Prometheus really answer to. Yet for all of Silence's brilliance, still he underestimates you. That blind spot is what will allow us to take Beta and Gaia right out from under him. While hundreds of Tanakh are cut down outside. So you knew Elizabeth. What was she like? Liz was everything she was. I see in you, and more. Your ingenuity, your determination, your moral compass. You've managed to distill her greatest qualities and make them your own. I'm not asking about me. Tell me about Elizabeth. What was she really like? The honest answer is that I don't actually know. For all the time that I spent with her, she always kept a part of herself locked away. It was like that from the moment we met. So when you met Elizabeth, she was what? Distant? Aloof? Not aloof. Not exactly. It was a summit in Paris about machine learning. A touchy subject in those days because regulatory authorities were just starting to clamp down on AIs. Liz gave the keynote address. She had already achieved great renown for her work in automated environmental reclamation. But in her address, she was just starting to imagine the next step, an AI-driven system that wouldn't just act on its programming, but actually take responsibility for its sphere of influence to care about life, not just follow orders. Revolutionary stuff. I was fascinated, and I wanted to meet her for a long time. I watched her after her talk. She had spoken with such moral authority, such empathy. But after that, she retreated. I could tell she felt uncomfortable with all of her admirers. It was as if giving the talk had cost her something. I didn't want to be a pest, so I planned my approach carefully. So how did you finally approach Elizabeth after her talk? I picked the right moment. The morning of the next day, right as she came back to the conference, she had just had her coffee. She was fresh, rested. It was like she had braced herself for the onslaught of colleagues. I asked if I could walk with her then put forth a question about her talk that I thought was intelligent. Her answer made me realize it wasn't, but she was very welcoming, almost as if we were previously acquainted. It was only halfway through the conversation that I realized she knew exactly who I was. It was quite a shock to me. My business was trafficking in secrets and I took great pains to protect my anonymity. So that was Liz, perpetually one step ahead. I came to view our meeting as a metaphor for our friendship. She always seemed to know me far better than I knew her. I guess I know the feeling. First Faro, now Hikaru and the Tanakh. Your plan would wipe out an entire tribe. There has to be another way. We are in an admittedly desperate situation, but I assure you there isn't. Remember Zero Dawn. Elizabeth's sacrifice, sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. If it looks impossible, look deeper. Wait, 
the data channel. It still exists, doesn't it? I need you to open it. Let me talk to Beta. Impossible, we might be detected. It's worth the risk. There is another way, one where the Tanakh survive. But we won't. If the others... If you want to help, open it. I'd open it, Tilda. <laughs> What are they doing to her? Virtual reality dissociation. The manual merge of Hephaestus will take hours upon hours of tedious micromanagement. If she resists the work, they run simulations to induce feelings of isolation and despair. Beta, can you hear me? Watching me. I, I, I can't hold up this extra protection for long. You should have killed me. No. No, look at me. I'm coming for you. I promise. Okay. I just need you to hold out a little while longer and work on the merch. again when it's time. Can you hold on? As long as I know you're coming for me, I can endure anything. All right. I did as you asked. Now I think you need to tell me what you're planning. I'm going to take Silent's army away. I don't need it. Only the weapon he made to penetrate your shields. And how do you propose to get it? Ask him nicely? With Elagala and her rebels, he won't have a choice. We'll be his only option. Only option for what? What did you tell her? That is between me and my sister. Oh! Will be Silent's only option for crashing that base. I'll tell you the rest later. But first, there are a couple of things I have to do. Oh. And what are those? Lay my friend to rest. And then I'm going to use the override that Beta gave me at Gemini to put an end to Regala's rebellion. From the air. Wait. Since you insist on doing things your way, I know of something that will truly help you make a grand entrance with the Tanakh. The ancient Horus Titans still possess electromagnetic energy cells as part of their arsenal. Drop one of those on Regala's army and they'll receive quite a surprise. So go, do what you must. I'll come to your base if you manage to bring silence to the table. Not if, when. Erend, are you there? Aloy! Aloy, is that really you? Yeah, it's, it's me. Where's everyone else? We're all... At, we're, we're back at base. What happened? It... It might be easier to explain in person. I'll try to join you there when I can. Okay. I, we'll wait here for you. It's good to hear your voice, Aloy. I was not ready for the episode to be that emotional. <laughs> uh. Just
Just to let you know, I'm now patched into your focus network. Great. I take it the other Zenus can't hear us? Of course not. And they don't know about your base either, in case you were wondering. I've sent you data on the Horus energy cells you can use against Regala's forces. Reach out to me when you're ready to acquire one. Understood. Okay. <sighs> you know, from seeing Rost at the beginning to... Um, merging Gaia and Hades with that song. And then Vol. <laughs> Calling Beta her sister. Also, if from the air is what I think it means, <laughs> then I'm excited to jump back in. But I'm gonna leave it there for this episode because I need to go and recover. <laughs> I need to go and recover. Um. This game. <laughs> This game. <sighs> but yeah. I'm gonna call it there for this episode. <laughs> Let me know what you thought down in the comments. Can we get some love for Val in there as well? Um, I don't know how she's gonna tell the others. I'm not gonna be ready for that either. Uh, and yeah, leave a like if you did enjoy and subscribe to never miss a video. And until the next one, take care. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.